Ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to begin Professor Makoto Kobayashi's lecture. We would like to introduce Pro Professor Ryuichiro Kita Kitano, Professor of KEK, who will act as the moderator of this session. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to introduce to you Professor Makoto Kobayashi, Director of Research Center for Science Systems in JSPS. Um, Professor Kobayashi obtained his PhD from Nagoya University in 1972, and, uh, and then he worked at Kyoto University. There in Kyoto, together with Professor Maskawa, he has written his celebrated paper on CP violation in particle physics in 1973, which probably he's going to tell us about. And since 1979, he has been working at uh, KEK in Tsukuba, which actually I am working on. You will be visiting t tomorrow, I think. Um, and of course, in 2008, Professor Kobayashi was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics uh, for the discovery of the origin of the broken symmetry which predicts the existence of at least three families of quarks in nature. The meaning you will be learning <laughs> by, the, by his talk. Okay, anyway, today Professor Kobayashi is going to tell us about the mystery of matter and antimatter. Please start. Okay, uh, thank you very much for kind introduction. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, title of my talk, and uh, I'll soon explain what uh, antimatter means. At the end of it, uh, focus on my talk is on the uh, symmetry uh, between the matter and antimatter, and, uh, which is uh, one of the fundamental issues of the physics. The, uh, this year is somewhat special uh, for this subject. Uh, as I uh, will explain uh, later, uh, symmetry between the matter and antimatter, uh, uh, which is called the CP symmetry, is uh, uh, broken slightly. The, uh, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, symmetry breaking was discovered in 1964, uh, exactly 50 years ago. So the, this year is the 50th anniversary of the uh, violation uh, of CP symmetry. Okay, uh, CP violation is a uh, subject of my uh, research, uh, for which I was awarded the Nobel Prize, uh, together with Maskawa. And uh, our work itself was done uh, more than 40 years ago, but the experimental verification of uh, our theory was uh, achieved uh, many years later uh, by using the accelerator called the B-Factory. And uh, this was uh, done by two groups, one in USA and one in Japan. In Japan, uh, 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 the experiment was performed at KEK. Uh, just see, uh, 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 Kitano-san and the institute, which is a high energy accelerator lab in Tsukuba. And uh, actually, uh, it's a, uh, one of the institutes you are going to visit tomorrow, as he said. Uh, hopefully, uh, this uh, talk uh, makes you more interested in, in the tour. Okay, uh, let me uh, start with a, a quick review of the structure of matter. Uh, it, it's well known that the ordinary matter is made of uh, atoms, and uh, uh, at the center of the atom, uh, there is a nucleus. Of course, uh, this is uh, 
this figure is much distorted. The size of the a atom is uh, 10 to minus, around 10 to minus 8, and uh, while the nucleus is around uh, 10 to minus 13. And uh, also the, uh, uh, the motion of the electron cannot be described uh, by this simple orbit. So uh, most of the mass uh, of atom is uh, carried by the nucleus. Uh, the uh, nucleus is made of the proton and neutrons, and the, uh, the uh, neutron is uh, a little bit heavier than the proton, but they have the, almost the same mass. And the proton and neutron uh, are, are further made of uh, uh, quarks, two kinds of the quarks, U and D. So they, we can say that the, the uh, ordinary matter is made of the uh, two kinds of the quark, U and D, and the electron. Uh, but the, the idea of the quark ap appeared in the middle of 1960. So the, the, uh, so the uh, people uh, before that would say that uh, ordinary matter is made of the proton, neutron, and electron. Okay, anyway. Uh, now we, we consider the forces acting on uh, these particles. The electrons are bound by electric force. Uh, in, uh, in more generic term, it's called the electromagnetic interaction. The proton and neutron uh, are bound to the nucleus by uh, some force. This force must be different from the electro electric force because that the neutron does not have char electric charge. The uh, force is now called the strong interaction, and uh, uh, the, the binding force of the uh, nucleus was dis uh, discussed by Yukawa in 1935, and uh, 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 proposed he, he proposed the existence of the so-called Yukawa meson, which uh, mediates a strong force, strong interaction. The Yukawa meson is now called pion, and the, the uh, binding force of coke is also strong interaction. Okay. Uh, there is uh, one more interaction acting on them. The uh, two CGs, uh, we know that uh, uh, the neutron is stable inside the nucleus, but uh, uh, isolated uh, neutron is, uh, is uh, no longer stable, and it decays into the proton and uh, electron and the neutrino. Uh, the, uh, this decay is uh, caused by the uh, uh, another interaction, another force uh, called the weak interaction. Okay, the, these three, uh, three kinds of the interaction, electromagnetic, strong, and weak, are a fundamental interaction of matter, uh, nature. Uh, this is uh, of course, there is one more uh, fundamental interaction, gravitational interaction. But the uh, uh, strength of the gravitation is very small uh, for the uh, for, uh, particle phenomena, so that we can ignore the gravitational interaction in, 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 in usual particle phenomena. OK, uh, now uh, for the following discussion, the uh, concept of the antiparticle is uh, essential, so uh, I'd like to explain about the antiparticle in some detail. In the early 20th uh, century, the two important theories, uh, uh, special relativity and quantum mechanics, uh, appeared. The special relativity is related to the uh, property of the space-time, and uh, uh, kinematics of an object moving ve with a uh, very fast speed uh, uh, close to light velocity is uh, different from that of the classical mechanics. And uh, we have to apply the special relativity to describe a moving object with very fast speed. On the other hand, the uh, quantum mechanics was developed with the aim to describe the motion of the electron inside the uh, atoms. The motion is, however, not necessarily uh, so fast so it, it was developed without considering the special relativity 
at least in the very uh, in the in the uh, in the early stage. The uh, basic equation of quantum mechanics is the shredding equation. Okay, uh, uh, I have no intention of discussing the detail of this equation, but uh, we know uh, that this form correspond to the e equal p square over two m, which is the uh, kinetic en energy of non-relativistic motion. Okay. Uh, in 1928, Dirac tried to describe the relativistic motion of the electron in quantum mechanics and proposed the so-called uh, Dirac equation. And he derived this equation as the relativistic version of the Schrodinger equation, uh, although it looks uh, so different from the Schrodinger equation. And uh, again, I don't enter the detail of this equation, and uh, I don't explain the why uh, why this is a relativistic extension. But uh, uh, what is necessary uh, for the following discussion is that. Uh, Dirac equation has uh, solutions with negative energy in addition to the normal positive energy solution. Uh, namely, solution exists for the uh, energy uh, not less than uh, mc square and uh, not more than the minus mc square. So the around region of the energy is something like this. The uh, positive energy solution uh, uh, what we expect, but the uh, existence of the negative energy solution is confusing. Because and in quantum mechanics, a particle can jump from the one state to uh, other state by emitting or absorbing a photon. So the uh, electron in the positive energy state will fall into the negative energy state emitting a photon, uh, which means that uh, there will be no, no stable positive energy uh, electron. To avoid this difficulty, uh, Dirac proposed the, uh, uh, all the negative energy states are, uh, are preoccupied by the electron from the first. Okay. Uh, we call uh, those electrons Uh, in negative uh, energy C or Dirac C. Those, uh, those electrons are called the negative uh, C or Dirac C. And the reason why uh, this avoids uh, uh, the uh, previous difficulty is the following. The electron has a property uh, that no two electrons can occupy the same state. We, as is well known, the particles that have the, this property are called fermion. Okay, uh, the, because of this property, the, if all the negative energy states are preoccupied, then the normal electron can fall into the negative energy state. So uh, the the previous difficulty is avoided. From this interpretation of the negative energy solution, that we can draw a, a starting conclusion. If an electron is removed from uh, the uh, Dirac C, negative energy C, such a, a hole in Dirac C uh, would look like a particle with a positive energy and the positive electric charge. Lack of the negative energy looks like a positive energy and the lack of the uh, ne negative charge looks like the positive charge. Uh, today, the, this is a, a familiar idea in the material science, and, but uh, let me remind you that the, in, in this case, that the, this four would appear in our uh, vacuum. So uh, Dirac predicted the existence of the positive, po positively charged particle. The uh, particle should have the same mass with the electron. The, this was the first time uh, that the humankind noticed the existence of one particle. Soon after uh, uh, Dirac's prediction, sorry. Uh, in uh, 1932, Anderson discovered the, uh, this particle, uh, 
in the uh, cloud chamber exposed to the cosmic rays. He gave the name po positron to this particle, and uh, uh, we are using this name today for the antiparticle of the electron. electron. Okay, uh, now the question uh, is how general is the existence of the antiparticle? The Dirac's argument uh, sticks to the uh, uh, fermion character of the electron, but uh, there is another uh, type of the particle called the boson. The boson is uh, such that uh, many particles can occupy a single state at the same time. time. So uh, Dirac's argument uh, is not enough anyway. More uh, generic and the uh, complete formulation of the antiparticle is given by the uh, relativistic quantum field theory. Uh, I quote only the uh, conclusion of the theory here. Uh, conclusion is uh, uh, for every particle uh, with a fermion or boson, uh, there exists a, a corresponding antiparticle. And the antiparticle has the same mass as the corresponding particle, and the uh, electric charge is, is the uh, opposite, uh, opposite uh, has the opposite sign. And uh, okay, I skipped this remarks. And uh, as we have seen that the ordinary matter is made of the uh, uh, proton, neutrons, and electron. Since every particle has its antiparticle, the, uh, they have uh, their antiparticles. The antiparticle of the electron has uh, been already mentioned. Uh, it called the positron. And the antiparticle of the proton and the uh, neutron are called the antiproton and antineutron. Uh, uh, they are usually denoted by attaching a bar to this uh, uh, symbol of the corresponding particle. Uh, uh, only ex exception is a, a positron. The, now uh, we can imagine antimatter, which is made of antiparticle, just like the ordinary matter is made of the particle. Uh, anti antiproton and antineutron that positron can make up as uh, uh, matter-like object, which is called the antimatter. However, uh, we do not find those uh, antiparticles or antimatter in the natural environment in the usual sense. To understand the uh, reason of this, uh, we note an important property of the antiparticle, namely when uh, uh, an antiparticle encounter or collide with the corresponding particle, then uh, they annihilate and uh, are, are converted to other particles. For instance, when uh, low energy positron uh, and electron collide, they annihilate and become uh, two photons. Uh, this uh, is called the pair annihilation. And uh, uh, this is a partial reason for the absence of the antiparticle in the natural environment because uh, they will annihilate with the surrounding particle, even if they are uh, created by some means. For example, the cosmic ray uh, continues to produce the uh, positron. Actually, uh, this positron was discovered uh, by Anderson, but the uh, uh, produced positron would not accumulate in nature because the positron uh, encounters electron in the surrounding matter and they annihilate with them very quickly. So the, uh, Anderson took a picture of the positron immediately after the creation. Of course, the, uh, uh, this does not explain why the universe is made of the particles uh, uh, from the first. It could be made of the antiparticles. And, uh, this problem is called the matter dominance problem of the universe. Actually, it's related to CP violation, which I'm going to discuss uh, now. Uh, 
uh, by the way, they, in order to have an antiparticle, we no, need to produce them in some way. The most popular method to produce the antiparticle is to use high energy accelerator. In high energy collision, particle and antiparticle are, are created in pairwise, uh, which is the inverse reaction of the pair annihilation. Okay, uh, now uh, we consider the uh, uh, what CP symmetry is. Uh, First, let me uh, uh, give you a very naive definition of CP symmetry, which is probably sufficient to understand the following part of this talk. The uh, CP symmetry uh, means that the law of nature are uh, invariant under the exchange of particles and antiparticles. In other words, the, the law of nature is uh, the, uh, the same for the particle and antiparticle. Then the CP violation means uh, uh, break down the CP symmetry. So uh, CP violation implies that uh, uh, natural laws are not the same for particle and antiparticle. Okay, th this is a more precise definition of the CP. And uh, uh, C stands for uh, charge conjugation, which means uh, uh, operation of the simple exchange of the particle and antiparticle. P stands for the parity, uh, which is the operation of the space inversion. The CP is uh, a combined operation of the C and P. Okay? So the CP symmetry means uh, invariance under the combined operation C and B, P, and the CP symmetry is not uh, invariance under the simple exchange of particle and antiparticle, but, but the exchange, uh, particle antiparticle exchange is associated with the space inversion. Nevertheless, the if CP symmetry exists, we can say that the uh, natural laws are essentially the same for the particle and antiparticle. Uh, to, add, to understand why we consider CP instead of uh, a simple C symmetry, we have to go back to the, the, to the uh, 1956. In uh, 1956, it was found that uh, parity symmetry is uh, violated in weak interaction, and uh, this was a big surprise for the, uh, most of the physicists at that time. The subsequent development re reveals that the, the simple particle antiparticle symmetry C is also violated at the same time with the P, P violation. However, the, uh, uh, the symmetry under the combined uh, transformation CP uh, seemed maintained at the uh, at that time. So uh, uh, people came to believe that uh, symmetry between the particle and the antiparticle is restored in, in the form of the CP symmetry instead of the simple C symmetry. And this is a history. However, uh, the uh, uh, belief in CP symmetry uh, was uh, broken by the experiment done by Cronin in 1964, uh, what they discover is that uh, the uh, particle called uh, k long decay into two pions. And uh, although it's a very small portion of the total decay, uh, k long is uh, one of the strange particles which were discovered in 1950s, and the pion is a particle predicted by Yukawa to expand the nuclear force. Anyway, the, the existence of this decay implies CP violation. Uh, this is somewhat difficult to understand, uh, but uh, let me give you uh, just an uh, 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 idea uh, why, 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 why it is CP violation. K long is a special particle which is a, a superposition of particle and antiparticle. 
The superposition is the, the, is the concept appearing, of course, in quantum mechanics. Uh, then uh, uh, it can be shown that if the weight of the uh, superposition uh, P and Q, uh, if uh, weight are the same, the two uh, contribution uh, from uh, K and K bar uh, to this decay uh, would cancel each other. Therefore, the existence of the uh, uh, this uh, decay implies that uh, the weight of particle and antiparticle are different. If they are same, they, uh, they, we wouldn't uh, find this decay. Uh, so the uh, the, uh, the uh, weight is different. So the, it implies that the symmetry between the particle and antiparticle is broken. So uh, that, that is this is the meaning of this uh, discovery. And, uh, uh, this discovery was a big surprise again, and uh, people were. Uh, Okay, uh, the, uh, this discovery uh, brought uh, uh, a new puzzle. And uh, as I mentioned, the matter dominance of the universe is uh, 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 actually we know that the, 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 this uh, universe is made of matter. And so the, uh, uh, this matter dominance of the universe is clear Asymmetry between the particle uh, matter and antimatter. Anti -matter. However, uh, people did not consider the, this, this uh, matter dominance issue seriously in connection with the uh, uh, with uh, uh, particle physics for a long time. But uh, 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 nevertheless, that there is an important relation between the uh, matter dominance of the universe and uh, CP violation in particle physics. And uh, a popular theory of the evolution of the universe is the so-called uh, Big Bang, oh, sorry. Big Bang uh, scenario. And so the, uh, let me quickly remind you the relevant part of the Big Bang scenario. In the Big Bang scenario, the uh, universe be, uh, began with uh, ultra high uh, temperature and uh, ultra high uh, density state. In such state, uh, a huge number of the particle and the antiparticle coexisted. Uh, this is because that uh, pair creation and the pair annihilation of particle and antiparticle are keeping balance at uh, 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 such high temperature, uh, uh, something like this. Okay. Uh, as the temperature decreases, uh, annihilation dominates, and uh, particle and antiparticle disappear in pairwise. Finally, uh, uh, particle uh, remain and form from those remaining particle matter of this universe was composed. This is a, uh, the scenario. For this scenario to be effective, however, the number of the particles should be greater than antiparticle. Otherwise, the particle would not remain because of the pair annihilation. How did the number difference emerge? This is a problem. Okay. In 1967, a Russian physicist, uh, Andrei Saharov, wrote a paper in which he claimed that the uh, for the number of difference to emerge in the course of the evolution of the universe, uh, it's necessary that the GS3, uh, GS3 uh, condition uh, must be fulfilled. The, uh, I don't enter the detail, but the, the conditions include the CP violation. Uh, but the, you may be able to guess that uh, there must be some difference 
uh, in the property uh, between the particle and uh, antiparticle. Uh, otherwise, the uh, particle would not be selected. Therefore, the uh, matter dominance of the universe is one of the important target of the study of the CP variation today. Uh, at the moment, uh, at present, however, the uh, matter dominance problem is not yet solved. In the following, I'll focus on the CP variation in the laboratory experiment for which uh, we have uh, we now have a good explanation. Okay, so uh, uh, so uh, for the moment I put aside the uh, matter dominance issue. Uh, to this end, however, the, we need uh, some more uh, preparation about the structure of the elementary particles. So uh, let me. Okay, let me remind you that the nucleus, nucleus of, uh, uh, atom is made of the proton and neutron. Here, uh, uh, I put aside the electron profile. And in 1935, Yukawa predicted the existence of the pion as a, a particle mediating the strong interaction. And the pion was found in 1947. The pion has three charge states. And around 1950, a group of particles called strange particles were uh, discovered. And, uh, the K1, which appeared in the previous slide, is one of the uh, strange particles. The strange particles include K1, lambda, sigma, and so on. All of these particles uh, are, are strongly interacting particles. Uh, in other words, the, the strong interaction is acting on them. And the uh, uh, strongly interacting particles are called uh, hadron. Uh, the uh, uh, electron is not a strongly interacting particle, so it's omitted from this table. And uh, uh, anyhow, the number of the hadron increased substantially the, with the uh, increase, of, increase of the number of the hadron, the, some people uh, began to think that uh, it's difficult to regard all of them, all of hadron, as a fundamental object. And uh, they may be made of the, uh, 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 fewer fundamental elements. Uh, there are interesting story about the development of the study on uh, such uh, picture, but uh, I, I skip them and uh, jump to the uh, Koch model. In 1964, uh, German uh, proposed the uh, so-called Koch model. According to uh, this model, all the hadron are made of the three kinds of the Koch, U, D, and S. And the baryon, like proton and neutron, are made of the three quarks, uh, which I already mentioned. Uh, and the, uh, the uh, and the pion is made of the quark and an antiquark. Again, the antiquark is denoted by bar. And, uh, but in this case, uh, uh, sorry, uh, K1 is uh, uh, also made of the coke and anti coke. But in this case, uh, uh, S coke appears. Actually, the strange particle uh, contains the S coke or S, S, uh, anti S as a con uh, constituent. The uh, lambda is like this. Here you can see the S in this. Okay, and uh, uh, coke have the uh, curious property of the fractional electric charge. U has a two third of the unit charge, and the D and S have the uh, minus one third of the unit charge. And, uh, this property, along with the fact that the coke were not found experimentally, many people, including the uh, German himself, uh, doubted uh, about the reality of the coke. 
So uh, anyway, uh, let me summarize the situation at the end of the 1960s. Okay. Uh, I'm showing this because uh, it, 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 it was a moment just before the uh, revolution which took place in particle physics in 1970s. Uh, it was known that uh, there uh, exist three kinds of quark, U, D, and S at the moment, and uh, four kinds of the lepton, E and mu, and uh, two kinds of the neutrino, uh, were also uh, known to exist. Uh, so that this is a list of the uh, fundamental particle at the moment. Uh, end of the 1960s. The uh, status of the fundamental interaction at the moment is something like this. Uh, as I said, uh, these, there are three kinds of the fundamental interactions, strong electromagnet weak. Among them, the, we had an uh, uh, acceptable theory only for the electromagnetic interaction. Uh, this is so-called the Rinomari renormalization theory developed by Tomonaga, Schubinger, and Feynman. And, uh, uh, but uh, we didn't have such theories for strong and weak interaction uh, at that time. Uh, it means that the, we didn't have the, uh, 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 we did, uh, more pr uh, precisely, it, 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 it means that we didn't have the prescription to handle the divergent integral which appeared in the calculation or, or for such interaction. So the uh, situation was uh, somewhat frustrating uh, about the strong and weak interaction. That is the situation at the end of the 1960s. The situation uh, changed in the beginning of 1970 suddenly. In uh, 1971, uh, to hoot proved the uh, renormalizability of the so-called non-Abelian gauge theory. I have no time to explain what the non-Abelian gauge theory means, uh, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, what we need to note here is that uh, uh, this discovery uh, enabled us to describe the strong and weak interaction at the same level of the electromagnetic interaction. Uh, more specifically, the weinberg salam glacial theory uh, 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 account for the electromagnetic and weak interaction in the unified manner, and the QCD describes strong interaction. Anyway, uh, this was the uh, beginning of the revolution in the 1970s. Eventually, uh, this led to the, uh, the so-called standard model. Here, I, I focus on the CP violation in this development. In 1973, and uh, uh, Maskawa and myself uh, uh, discussed uh, how to explain the CP violation in this new framework of the renormalizable theory. And what we found then are uh, it's not possible to uh, accommodate CP violation in in three or four quark scheme. The uh, original quark model is three, but uh, uh, it has a flaw in the gauge theory. So the uh, four quark model was discussed uh, at the time, but uh, uh, what we found is that uh, even the four quarks is not enough to explain the CP variation. This means that uh, there is still unknown uh, particles and uh, uh, we propose a, a six coke model as a possible candidate. The six coke model implies something like this. Uh, in addition to the original three, the uh, CBT uh, 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 new cokes. Why six coke can accommodate CP violation is somewhat complicated. So uh, I don't enter the detail, but uh, you may get some feeling. Uh, from the following fact. In general, uh, in order to have the CP violation, the system must be uh, complicated to, to some extent. In other words, the simple system uh, becomes CP symmetric automatically. 
So uh, in, in this sense, uh, the four cog is uh, too simple, and the six cog is just enough uh, complicated. Uh, so the, you may ask uh, how about five cog, but uh, uh, there are some reason for the even number is preferred. And uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, uh, what we have done at the time. And uh, after we published uh, our theory, the discovery of the new corks and the uh, new leptons continued. In 1974, uh, Jepsi particle was discovered, and soon it turned out that uh, 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 it, uh, it made of the uh, fourth cork C and C bar. And uh, uh, the, uh, this discovery had a great impact on the particle physics. The people began to believe the uh, quarks uh, 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 quark as the earlier object. But, uh, but it, it had a little effect on the six quarks model yet. In 1975, uh, the uh, tau lepton was discovered. Uh, Tau is one of the lept fifth lepton, in, in a sense. The tau is a, uh, uh, this discovery had a significant effect on the model. And uh, uh, although it, it, it is lepton that the discovery of the tau was suggesting that the existence of the uh, third uh, family in the uh, coke sector too, so people began to pay attention to our model. In 1977, uh, Euprussian particle was discovered, but it turned out that it uh, uh, soon it turned out that it uh, 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 it's a band state of the fifth coke B and B bar. The discovery of the uh, the last coke T was as late as 1995. Anyway, uh, before that time, the, the existence of six uh, ki uh, kinds of the cork became uh, certain, certain. And uh, besides these ex uh, experimental development, theoretical development, understanding of the strong shown was also developed. Okay, now uh, let me summarize uh, 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 situation. Uh, this is the same the previous slide, describing the situation at the end of 1960. From this slide, the number of the cork becomes six, and the number of lepton be also became six. The num uh, all, all, all three kinds of the, uh, interaction became the renormalizable. And the, uh, this is what is called the standard model. Okay, this is. Uh, uh, the uh, summary what uh, happened in 1970s. Okay, uh, by the end of the 1970s, the uh, standard model was accepted as the. By the way, the, uh, yesterday uh, uh, we have a, another standard model. Uh, uh, Professor Schmidt mentioned the standard model, but it, it is a standard model of cosmology, but this is a standard model of particle. Okay. Their difference, and uh, the standard model was accepted as a standard, but it was still necessary to uh, establish that the CP variation actually occurred just according to this mechanism. Uh, this was done by a B factor experiment uh, at KK and SRAT. Uh, B factory is an electron proton collider. Uh, optimized to produce uh, uh, the particle called B mesons. Uh, B mesons are heavy particles uh, containing the fifth cork B. Okay. Mm, the, it, it was pointed out that the relatively large CP asymmetry would be observed in the B meson system. So the uh, uh, Using the rest of the time, I'd like to show you the development of the uh, B-Factory experiment. Uh, as I said, the B-Factory was built at KK and SRAC. Uh, this is a comparison of the KK and SRAC. Uh, accelerator is uh, quite similar, and the colliding electron and uh, 
poison have different energy. And the KKB is the 8 GB electron and the 3.5 poison, while slack has the electron is 9 GB and the uh, poison is 3.1 GB. Anyway, this asymmetry is Asymmetric setting of the energy enables us to uh, measure the CP asymmetry, as we will see later. Okay, uh, bearing my energy difference, they are quite similar. And, uh, uh, it, it just may remind you the, the again, the, the yesterday, Schmitt, Schmitt, Professor Schmidt story, but the, in this case, too, we have uh, uh, quite similar. Uh, experiment. And, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, this kind of thing uh, often is often seen in the high energy physics. Uh, so, uh, uh, in this case, uh, too, uh, the competition is very tough and uh, but uh, uh, very fair and uh, even productive. The construction was uh, approved almost the same. Uh, time in the slug assist operation in 90, uh, sorry, 2008 and uh, uh, KK also stopped uh, uh, running uh, 2010 but now uh, uh, KK is uh, uh, upgrading the, the machine right now, and the new machine will be called the Super KKB. You may be able to see the uh, development tomorrow. Okay, uh, the remarkable thing is the luminosity uh, of KKB and the uh, slack machine achieved, and this is a trend of the uh, luminosity of the uh, this kind of accelerator, and the uh, these are the uh, data for the uh, KK and the SRAC, and uh, it, it, it uh, how you, say, you, you can see that their value are, they are far above the increased, increased trend of the luminosity. Okay, uh, this uh, is the aerial view of the B factory, mm. and. Uh, it consists of the injection lineage and the two rings, okay? And uh, I skipped the, this is a. Now, uh, now let me explain the typical measurement of the CP asymmetry. And the uh, uh, electron uh, poison collision produces a pair of the uh, B meson and the anti B, B meson. Uh, uh, since the energy of the electron is larger than the poison, uh, the produced particle are boosted to the direction of the electron, and the quickly uh, they decay with a lifetime of the 10 to the minus 12 second. Before the decay, they travel around uh, only a few hundred micron. And uh, one, one side of the uh, decay is used for tagging. Uh, it means that the uh, which particle we can determine the which particle is B, the B or B bar. The decay. Uh, uh, if this side is B, then the other side is B, uh, uh, B bar, anti B. And uh, uh, in this side, we, we look for a special decay mode. Then the the theory predicts that uh, uh, in such uh, case that the, the uh, distribution of the decay point uh, is something like this. It, it, it's, uh, it, has a, it shows a significant difference between the B and B bar. So the, uh, the experiment uh, uh, tried to look at this difference. That is the idea of the uh, experiment, and uh, uh, maybe I can skip. And uh, this is a uh, uh, result obtained by the experiment, and uh, uh, this is the uh, 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 data uh, 
for the de uh, decay point distribution, it, it shows a clear difference for the uh, B and B particle and antiparticles. So, um, uh, using this result, uh, we can fix the uh, parameter appearing in the uh, theory. And then, this is the uh, rho and eta is a uh, parameter appearing in the theory, and the experimental, we can uh, put the experimental constraint on, on this. Uh, parameter plane and uh, all the constraint uh, uh, overlap at, at one point that that implies that uh, uh, the theory is uh, working well. Okay, this is uh, 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 what the experiment has done. So, uh, since I have run out of time, I like to con uh, conclude by summarizing the present situation of the CP violation. Okay, uh, uh, as for the uh, uh, CP violation observed in the uh, laboratory experiment, uh, we can say that the standard model uh, explained the CP violation in, in both and in K meson and B meson. And, uh, in this talk, I didn't, I did not mention much uh, about the the uh, matter dominance issue and, and its relation to CP violation. But the situation of, of this problem is something like this. The standard model cannot explain the matter dominance of the universe, unfortunately. So there, there will be yet unknown particle and yet unknown uh, CP violating interaction somewhere. So they, uh, now we are looking for such uh, uh, particle and interaction quite uh, eagerly. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kobayashi. Um, it's always nice to hear the story of revolutionary discovery. And also amazed that you know, 19th century, 20th century physics Progress is really big, you know, starting from quantum mechanics. No, really, the physics in the microscopic physics part. So, okay, so do you have any questions? Uh, I want to do, ask you about. Uh, how do you understand uh, the particles in negative energy orbits? Uh, in, in, sorry. Ne negative, uh, negative energy orbits for the direct, direct uh, uh, equation. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, as I explained in the first part, that the, uh, negative energy state is occupied so that we cannot see uh, any negative energy particle. Uh, uh, that is the setting of the, our vacuum. Mm -hmm. Negative energy state is uh, all the negative energy state are occupied. So that we, we, we cannot notice the existence of the negative energy state in that, in that situation. But instead, uh, we, the, uh, if a uh, hole appears in the negative energy state, it looks like a positive energy state because the uh, lack of the negative energy is. May, may, you, maybe you can imagine that the lack of the negative energy state looks like relatively that state is a positive, that state has a positive energy. So the, uh, the, in the sense that the uh, uh, result is consistent with the, uh, all, all the uh, particle had the positive energy. So, so they compose the vacuum, you see, in the Neptune. So it, just see, it uh, seems to be uh, another dimension. Yeah, right? No, no, no. This is a real, real vacuum, our real. vacuum, yeah. Uh, but you, you may wonder the, why the, this uh, vacuum uh, is minus infinity. In a sense, that it has a minus infinity energy, but we, we, we don't notice that just 
We just need to notice that. So, uh, another question. Why is uh, uh, matter and uh, antimatter, when they yeah, maybe contact, the annihil, I don't, f I forget that word. They disappear and ch change to the energy, uh, photons. So why should this process uh, must happen? Must happen, when, when? Annihil. Annihilate, right? Annihilate, yes. Why annihilate happens? Yeah, if you have the antiparticle by some reason, then the, it, it, it will annihilate with the surrounding particle. But if you don't have uh, any antiparticle, then the, the, the annihilation process will not be seen. Okay? You don't see any, any annihilation process. Any physical reasons? Yeah, f well, of course, it's physical. If uh, we, we, we can create an antiparticle by some method, yeah, yes. for instance, uh, the uh, high energy collision using accelerant, then the produced antiparticle will travel sh shortly, then the soon they found the corresponding particle, then annihilate. Questions? Um, the uh, CP violating uh, K-on decay involves only three quarks. And a at the same time, uh, for a CP violation to exist, we need the three generational quarks, that's six quarks. So how to uh, intuitively understand the seemingly conflict facts. Okay, that is a very good point. And uh, uh, actually, the decay of the K particle uh, uh, takes place. Uh, 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 the, that that decay process includes some kind of the intermediate state. Okay, the the process going. Uh, the process go di does not go directly. It has a, some kind of intermediate state. And the, in this intermediate state, there's all the six kinds of the particle appear. Otherwise, uh, uh, CP violation uh, will not occur. That, therefore, the intermediate state is very important. So uh, all the particles have the antiparticle which have opposite charge. So neutron don't have any charge. So what is the charge of anti-neutron? OK, uh, I, I skipped that point. But uh, in the case of the neutral particle, we have uh, two possibilities. One is the uh, particle and antiparticle are identical. That, uh, this uh, is a case for the photon. In the case of the photon, it's neutral, and in this case, uh, uh, particle and antiparticle are identical to this uh, photon itself. However, in the case of the neutron, the, in this case, uh, uh, particle and antiparticle are different particles. But uh, because it's neutral, the, the, the charge, we cannot see the, any charge difference, but uh, uh, we can. Uh, uh, see that uh, they are different particles by some other means. Um, well, with the uh, um, C of the negative electron states, uh, saying that that's uh, filled, like all those states are filled, seems like a very undesirable ad hoc way of fixing the solution. Are there any other formulations that have been explored to uh, try and get away from that model? Uh, how is this? Anyway, the, the uh, Dirac's argument is, uh, in some sense, uh, the, the discovery argument. Just, and uh, it, uh, it's not fully consistent. So the, uh, the, uh, at present, we understand all the situation 
in, in, in the scheme of the relativistic field theory, quantum field theory. In, in that theory, that uh, we, we can uh, formulate everything consistently. So they, I, I hope you will study out anti relativistic field theory. Sir. How can we find unknown particle? Is there any theory for that already? Sorry, uh, please. Uh, how can we find an um, unknown particle? Unknown. Uh, <laughs> you mean the last part? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, it's not uh, easy to answer, but uh, the, if uh, they uh, are not so heavy, then the, we, we have a chance to produce. So those particles in a future accelerator experiment. <coughs> the, if it, they are very, very heavy, then that we have no chance, no, no such chance. So the, in that case, uh, we will uh, have only the, some indirect evidence of the existence. Thank you. Uh, OK. Yeah, we have time for last questions. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> First, thanks for the nice lecture, and um, I'm not a specialist in particle physics, so sorry if my questions are so naive. Um, my first question is, uh, uh, antimatter, we, you consider that positron, antineutron, and proton are antimatter. How come they are considered antimatter if they are themselves are still matter? Uh, this is my first question. And the second is, um, if a positron and electron, when they combine, they produce a photon or two photons, do you think that we might reach some point that where we can decelerate photon and produce particles? Okay, okay uh, let me answer the second point. And the, the, if the photon and the photon, very high energy photon collide each other, then the, the, it produces the pair of the positron and uh, positron and the electron, and uh, this is actually uh, we, we 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 have seen such a <laughs> uh, reaction everywhere. Okay, and the first part is uh, the antimatter is uh, yeah, sorry the point. Uh, uh, what was the point? That well, it was that you consider the positron, antineutron, yes. antiproton, antimatter, while they are still matter. So still matter. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it looks uh, quite similar to the ordinary matter, but uh, well, they are different things, and they're quite dangerous things. They if the matter and antimatter meet, then the, the uh, pair narration will take place and the, the huge energy will be released. So, but uh, uh, if the antimatter is isolated, as far as it, they, it is isolated, it, it looks like uh, uh, ordinary matter, quite similar. Thank you. All right, let's thank Professor Kovacs again. <laughs>
After the group discussion, coffee will be served in the discussion rooms at the Sakura Tower. After that, we have two hours for you to prepare your team presentation. You can use the conference floor on the second floor of the Prince Sakura Tower, where you have been for the group discussions. After the team preparation, uh, presentation preparations, we have a dinner from 6 p.m. in the Zuiko room on the first floor of this building. Please re be reminded that tonight we have a concert after dinner to enjoy music played with harp trio in the Gyoko at the same floor at Zuiko. Tomorrow, the morning sessions will begin at 9.30 a.m. here in the same room. We hope to enjoy this program and see you at the dinner. Please take all your belongings with you when you leave this room for lunch. Thank you.